On today's training video, we are doing a structure gel manicure fill. We're going to go from this, this is about a six week grow out, and we're going to fill it to this. So I start off by pushing the cuticles back. You have to make sure your finger is anchored and you're holding it like you would a pencil. How much pressure do you use? Um, I'm not using a whole lot of pressure. I'm going at them pretty softly. Depending on the client, some clients have really sensitive cuticles, and if you push too hard, you're gonna make them bleed. So you wanna add enough force, but not so, so much. And your cuticles love you. <laughs> They're overactive. <laughs> So one thing that I want you guys to pay attention to when Karen is pushing back my cuticle, she's not pushing too hard, but she is using enough pressure to be able to create a small pocket where the skin meets the nail. During our prep, we use the Russian manicure technique. And so we use a flame bit to remove the cuticle that's stuck on my nail plate. And so creating a little pocket is gonna make sure that that e-file bit can nicely fit underneath there. So you can kind of see how my skin, as Karen is moving my skin back, my skin is a little pliable where it's nice and flexible and that's gonna give her plenty of flexibility and room for her e-file for that, that flame bit to go underneath and remove the cuticle that's stuck on the nail plate. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the color and about 10% of that bio sculpture with my five in one bit. I'm also not adding a whole lot of pressure. How do you get so close to the side, the side walls? Um, I'm shifting over my five-in-one, and I'm moving the skin as I'm doing it and laying it flat to get most of it off. I'm really used to just removing it with my hand file, so I'll go back and remove that red. Okay. How short do you want to go? Um, as short as you can, but keeping a soft almond. Then to remove length, I like using my five and one. I know, how does that look? Yeah. Okay. I like using my five and one drill to remove some of that length. Um, sometimes it catches, so you have to make sure you're careful and it's at a bit of an angle when you're removing it. If you notice when Karen is removing the color, She's leaving the product on, like she said, she's only removing maybe about 10% of the um, structure gel that I have on my nails already. Um, but another thing that you want to make sure that you're paying attention to is, is how she's using her e-file. Now for Karen, she likes to use the hand file to remove the rest of the red around the cuticle. Um, but what I really want you guys to pay attention to is the direction that she's moving her e-file. And then also, as she's removing the color, she's also inspecting my nails underneath, right? She's looking for any lifting issues. She's looking for um, any sort of um, problem with allergies. She's looking at my sidewalls to see if I have any weird hangnails going on that she knows that she's gonna have to attend to. So just try to paint a mental picture as you're removing the color and also inspecting the client's hands so that you have a good idea of how long this service is gonna take you. And that is gonna come into play when the client wants artwork because if the client wants artwork and let's say for example, as 
you're removing the color, you're noticing that this client has a ton of lifting that you're gonna have to fix, that's gonna add more time to your service. And so depending on what the client wants, you may want to make some changes to what she's asking for, um, or perhaps if you know you're gonna be running a slightly behind, you might wanna keep in mind and um, send the next client a message and let them know that you might be running a little bit behind. So these are, during the inspection process and the removal process of the color is when you really should be paying attention to all of that. Another thing that you can do is as you're remo removing the color, if you do see that the client has a lot of lifting, start asking her questions. Ask questions like, especially if it's a new client, what do you do for a living? Do you like to garden? Have you moved recently? Do you like to camp? Moving, gardening, and camping are the top three things that you're gonna notice is always gonna give you issues when it comes to lifting and, um, and nail breaking. And so finding out what the client likes to do for as a hobby or if for, for a living in general, if they're in the water a lot, um, this is going to allow you to customize the service and figure out what type of structure gel you want to use on this client. Does the client need a hard gel? Do they need a super flexible gel? So just asking those questions and, and making sure that you're customizing the service as, as best as you can. So when I want you guys to keep in mind when the product meets the nail and you're going through with your 5-in-1 to remove color, you need to make sure you're not angling it this way. You're keeping it pretty flat. You really don't want to cause um, damage to the natural nail. So making sure it's nice and flat, it's going to remove that color and you have to make sure you're not hitting that natural nail while you're working with your 5-in-1. So now the bits we are going to use. We're going to use the unicorn bit and we're going to use the flame bit. The way I like doing my manicures, I start off with using my unicorn bit. Um, and it depends on the client. On some clients, I like using my flame first. But I do feel that try both ways from your flame or your unicorn. See what works best for you or your client. So now to use my unicorn, I'm going to keep it pretty flat. So what the unicorn does, it's gonna push that cuticle back and we're only focusing on the, what's it called? The nail plate. The nail plate with this. So I'm gonna keep it nice and flat. I'm not angling it. And I'm not adding any pressure to it. And I'm also using it to clean the skin right mm -hmm. about there. You don't want to over file either. One thing I want to point out is as Karen is using the unicorn bit on my cuticle area, she's going to be using the e-file either in the forward position or the reverse position, right? So right now she's going to the left. So I, I have to think the opposite. You're going to the left, right? My right, her left. Um, so normally when you're going to the left, um, you have it in the, um, in the forward position. When you're going to the right, you have it in the reverse position. That's if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, then it's the opposite. But another thing I wanna point out, pay attention to how she's pushing my skin completely back in a way from where the e-file bit is going, right? She's opening up that well that we created when she pushed the cuticle back to give herself room and making sure that she can get to the area that she's, that she's trying to get to. So pushing the skin back is extremely important because it's gonna open up the, the, the area that you're working on so that you can see better. Don't be hesitant to pull the skin back. She's not hurting me in any way. She's not pressing too hard. Um, you have to think of it as if this were your nails, how hard would you be pressing to make sure that you can see? The client is gonna thank you in, in, later on in the future that you did move the skin away from the area so that you can see better. Instead of you being timid and being afraid to pinch and pull and move the client's hands the way that it needs to be to make your job easier. And so by doing that, 
you're making sure that you're giving them a well-rounded uh, manicure. Wherever my bit goes, that's where my finger is going to pull the skin too. Ooh. So if I'm going up here, I'm kind of lightly pulling at the skin. Then when I'm here at the side, I'm really moving that skin back. And I'm making sure I'm removing all of that excess cuticle right about here. Flick your cuticle on the other one, hun. Huh? Removing that. Mm -hmm. Also, now that I'm on my right side, I'm gonna go ahead and flick the cuticle with my unicorn bit. So once I'm up here, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm slightly moving that cuticle up. Notice as that's not really hurting her, I'm not adding any pressure to do that. Why do you flick it up? Oh, good question. If you notice the flicking technique that Karen is talking about, she's basically pushing that cuticle back and up and away from the nail plate. And the reason why she does that is because naturally, during the service, you'll notice, depending on how long you take for each service, this piece of skin right here is actually gonna eventually fall back down over the nail plate, right? Because that's what protects our nail plate. And so your body is naturally gonna do that. It's gonna force that skin back down. So the reason why she's flicking it upwards is because right now, as she's working on my nails, she wants to make sure that that skin stays up while she's working. And what that's gonna do when she applies the structured gel to my hands, that's gonna give her enough room to get super close to the cuticle without touching the skin. And so, and then what ends up happening is when that skin falls down and it, and it covers the nail plate, it's also gonna touch the color and the, and the actual manicure, giving no separation between the cuticle and the, the actual uh, manicure and the color that the client sees. So a lot of times, some of the complaints that clients will sometimes, um, and not necessarily complaints, but feedback, is when you're brand new, a lot of times nail techs who are new, they are really super afraid to get so close to that cuticle. And so they leave a, a slight gap between the cuticle and where they put the product. The problem with that is if you didn't do this technique the right way and you didn't push it back far enough and you left the gap, when that skin falls back down, the client is gonna go home feeling like she's gotten her, her nails done a week ago. And so to eliminate that feeling, feeling like I just paid for a service and it looks like it's a week old, making sure that you push that cuticle back and, and especially before you start applying your structured gel, and polishing, pay attention to make sure that that skin didn't fall down um, as you're doing the service. And if it did, just use a cuticle pusher to push it back up. So now what I'm using, I'm using my flame bit. Notice as I'm not pointing it in this direction, I'm laying it pretty flat. So I wanna be careful I'm not hurting my client with this bit. So I'm always anchoring my finger and I'm holding it like a pencil. And again, anytime, wherever I go with my bit, that is where my finger is going to move. I'm not adding any pressure. The only pressure that's going, or how would I explain that? The only, it's just the speed of the nail mm -hmm. drill that's really doing all the work for me. So I wanna say the hardest part students really struggle with right about in this sinus area, if you're not careful, you're gonna make someone bleed. That is the most sensitive area. So you don't wanna keep it 
pointed because that's when you're going to cause you're going to cause someone to bleed. So you want to make sure you're moving the skin and I'm kind of pinching or holding that back. I'm angling my bit and all I'm doing is pushing that back and moving that forward. And now that's nice and clean. And you really want to make sure that sinus area is nice and clean because that's where most of the lifting comes from. Notice how I'm also removing that dead cuticle, moving back and forth. When I'm, remo when I'm moving my bit, that's removing the dust for me and giving me a better visual. And again, I'm just going at it really lightly. It's the first time you've done my nail. Yep. <laughs> and I'm being recorded. <laughs> we'll never forget the moment. <laughs> we can never. So it's double nerves. <laughs> yeah, but usually people who do my nails is because they were struggling. <laughs> Fair. I had my moments. <laughs> Maybe when I first started, mm -hmm. didn't I? I don't know. I don't remember. So the most important part when you have a brand new file, it, it's to score it so you don't cut your client with it. So what I like to do, I like to grab my pusher. I like to hold it flat. Mm -hmm. I like to hold my pusher flat. And I'll do this about maybe two to three times on each side. And then because I have gloves, it's so much easier to like see if I cut my gloves. If I don't cut my gloves, then we're fine. But I'm also going to be super careful when I'm filing their nails. And I like using my finger as a guard when I'm doing that. And you'll see more of that here in a minute. For the shape, you like that, like sharp almond, right? Yeah, you could do like a soft almond. Okay. So when we're filing, oh, I forgot which one it was. So when we're filing, I like to hold it straight and see the spine of my file to get that shape. So when we shape the nails, um, if you notice, Karen is keeping her file nice and parallel to my nail. And what we mean by that is she should not be able to see this side of the file as she's shaping. The most m main part that she can see is the white part of the file, which is the spine like she talked about. Another thing I want you to pay attention to is she's looking down at the nail, right? This is the client view. So when the client looks at their nails, they do this, but then they also do this. So when you're shaping, if you point the client's finger down like this, that's this view that the client is going to look at. So that allows you to get that general shape that you're looking for when you're doing the shaping of the nails. It's not until she gets the general shape that she's going for that she then goes underneath the nail to clean up the sides. Um, and, and what I mean by sides is the sidewalls, right? When she's going from from where the, um, where the skin meets the nail plate all the way down to the tip of the nail, that's, your, um, that's the, your, the sidewall of the nail. You have the sidewall of your skin, which is this space right here. Let me show you. So this is the sidewall for the most part, right? But um, you can also, you can call this part a sidewall too, but I'm just going to flip my finger over. But basically from this point here to this point here, you want to make that's, you want to make sure that that is nice and straight as straight as you can get it. So when Karen was shaping, she's looking down. This is the way that the client is going to see the shape before she goes underneath. You don't want to start underneath first until you get the general shape, because then if you make a mistake, you might have taken too much off 
or whatnot, and then it's gonna make it really difficult for you to get the shape you're looking for. So you're gonna notice that, um, Karen, one of my fingers do like that. <laughs> if any of you have seen that clip with Angela Johnson, you'll know what I'm talking about. But, um, so my fingernail actually grows a little crooked. It, it grows more to, if I'm looking down at my nail like this, it grows more to the left. So Karen is gonna have to overcompensate on that left side to push my nail more this way. That way when the polish goes on, it looks straight. A lot of times what ends up happening is new nail techs will pay more attention to the smile line and try to shape around where the smile line is. But when you have a client that has a fingernail that grows slightly crooked, you cannot pay attention to where the smile line is at. At a glance, it's gonna look like my nail is crooked compared to where it's aligned with the smile line of the natural nail. So when you're doing this part, try to envision that fingernail with color on. As long as it looks nice and straight with the color on at the end of the day, that's what the client is looking for. Okay, so now we wanna talk about um, We've talked about the filing. Um, now that we're on my middle finger, the nail plate is a little bit wider so you can actually um, actually put into view exactly what we've been describing. Um, so holding the nail file in an upward position where you can only see the spine of the file as you're filing is gonna make sure that you're creating a straight line. Um, and so she's getting the general shape of the nail right now. But one of the things that here in a minute that I want you to pay attention to is after she gets the general shape, she's gonna go underneath like we talked about earlier. But after she does that, she's gonna describe to you how she does the blending and then also how she does what we call a dust line. Um, dust lining is a technique that we've been using here um, in my company for a long time and we wanted to bring that technique to Diamond Nail Tech Academy because it actually helps create a really nice canvas for your, um, the product, whether you're doing acrylic or a structure gel. Um, anytime you're doing any kind of fill, um, doing the dust line technique is gonna save you a lot of time. So pay attention to how Karen describes the dust lining and the blending and how she's gonna remove the red and then blend the, um, the structure gel that's still on my nail to the natural um, nail bed. So now to blend, I'm gonna go ahead, I don't keep this straight, I'm gonna angle it in just a little. And that removes what I call the love handles or what we call the <laughs> love handles here. It's a fun little terminology and a nice visual because we all know what love handles are. So once I get a nice little line there and there's no red, I'm gonna go in to blend that out. Notice how I'm starting from the side here. When she's blending the product to the natural nail plate, um, she's not using any pressure when she's doing that stage. Um, and right now I'll let her describe the dust lines a little bit. So what the dust lines are, it's pretty much just that, right? We're looking for a nice straight dust line. 
that's going to tell us a lot about if our product is even or, or not. So I'm starting off from this side and once I get a nice line right there, I'm going to just sweep it over. And in all honesty, it's just like you're playing a, a game, right? You're moving one dust or the same dust line all the way over to that other side. Now, if it's not straight, that's telling me there's a nice divot there and I need to make sure I go back behind it and make that nice and straight. So notice as it's still nice straight and I'm not going over it like stepping over it, it's really just going right behind it. All the way I'm, until I'm done. I'll, demonst I'll demonstrate how not to do it and what people's mistakes are when they're doing the dust lines on uh, the index finger. So now one of the mistakes that a lot of people do, they'll miss a step. And if you notice right about here, close to the, where the product meets the nail, there's red polish on there. If you don't remove that and you were to seal it off or seal, seal it with the whatever product you're using, you're pretty much sealing that red inside that clear product. Now, if they were using a dark color that day, it would be, I guess, okay. But the mistake comes, comes in when they're following appointment, they wanna do French. Now you go to remove everything and you go to do your French, but there's red encapsulated in there. So you always wanna make sure there's no color on there. So now for the blending part of it, you don't want to feel the product on and you want it to be very seamless. So I'm just going and I'm blending. And you'll notice how you can tell. You can't really tell where that product is and where that natural nail is compared to this side here. The red really does show it, but you wanna make sure you blend it. So now what you, what I told you guys with your dust lines, I'm gonna show you how not to sweep those dust lines. Let's say I don't get a good dust line here, like I get it, then I skip over it. Then I skip over this one right that's not seamless i have three different straight lines that i'm not following all the way through so it's not going to give me that canvas that smooth canvas i'm really looking for so we have to make sure we're following our dust lines and not skipping and moving that along because i, I can knock off that dust line and it's going to look like i did it but i didn't do it One thing about the dust lines that Karen just described, when you don't follow through, you start the dust line on one side of the nail plate and then you sweep it all the way across the other side until it's completely gone. If you sweep a little bit, you skip it, then you sweep the rest. What you're doing there is you're creating flat surfaces all around different parts of the nail and normally that mistake, you're not necessarily going to catch it until after you start polishing. Whatever uneven areas are on the nail plate, even though you're using a structured gel and the gel traditionally will self-level, um, it still leaves these micro uneven spaces because your canvas wasn't nice and prepped correctly. Um, and so if you're using a, a gel polish color like white, for example, if you go in and you don't have a nice even canvas to work with, that gel is going to self level. And if you don't catch it before you cure it, you're not going to see that issue until after you start polishing. And white is one of those colors that does not is not forgiving whatsoever. Um, another time that you normally would find 
that the dust lining will um, will in the future after when you start polishing will show those mistakes is when you're doing acrylic if you're if you're filing on top of an acrylic product and you're not sweeping your your dust lines all the way across and creating that smooth surface you don't have a structured gel that self levels that you're putting on top of the acrylic you normally go from acrylic product straight to color and that's really really where you're going to notice all of the mistakes that you've made in your filing techniques when you're when you're applying that color on top of the acrylic um, so just paying attention to creating the dust line um, also notice how the different ways that karen is holding the file when she's um, shaping the nail and when she's doing the, the the dust lines there's a certain way to hold the nail file so you can still see what you're doing and the file does not block the view of you sweeping that dust line across the surface so now for this part i already dusted there's so much dust here I don't want that in my gel so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna fold this up and I'm gonna fix this and just lay it flat the nice things thing about these paper towels they kind of just stick together so that that way I know nothing's gonna move in there so what I'm going to do before I apply any product on, my job is to make sure it's nice and clean. So I go and dehydrate my wipe and I'm going to go in back and forth motions to make sure everything's nice and clean. And I'm going to go underneath the nail. You never know if they scratch their scalp, if they put lotion on. All of that gets stuck right underneath there. I'm gonna grab a brand new one and do the same thing. So one of my little tips, well tricks, is really to saturate that, grab it and push the cuticle back. I just got into the habit of really doing it that way because I love to like make sure everything is nice and set. So I'll do that on maybe three nails. If you have clients who have really oily cuticles, you could do this maybe like before you go to like fill or use the product on that nail. I want to point out when you're really dehydrating the nail, we want it to look chalky and gross. So if you see around her cuticle, they look white. It's because they're so dehydrated because my my cleanse was so good. Now if I just went in like a little, you know, barely touched it with my wipe, we wouldn't have this look on it. So that tells me a lot. It also tells me if she went to scratch her face or touch something. So we want to make sure we really memorize what this looks like. So as Karen is applying the structure gel on my nail, I want you to pay close attention to the technique that she's using when she's doing it. Um, the first part of the nail that she's going to pay attention to is, um, is the tip. And the reason why we like doing it this way, so she's going to cap first. So she's going directly underneath and she's paint brushing that gel underneath the nail and capping the nail before she goes up to the cuticle. And the reason why we do that is because as she's 
applying the product, usually what you see when people are applying a structured manicure or even gel polish for that matter, a lot of times they go straight for the cuticle first and then they cap at the end. The problem with that is you're gonna be depositing extra polish or extra product on the tip of the nail and it gives you this little lift, like this little ramp on the very tip. So if you cap at the beginning, then you don't have to worry about capping the nail for the rest of the application. So the first coat that she did was the slip layer and that's a very thin coat, making sure that she's getting as close as she can to the cuticle, as close as she can to the side walls without touching. And then the second layer, that's where the structure comes in. So now she's, she grabbed extra gel and she's applying it on top of the wet slip layer. And the reason why you do that is because the gel is self-leveling. And so wherever you put that first coat, that second coat is gonna go directly to that. And then what you just saw her do now is what we call a combing technique, where she's grabbing a tiny bit of gel on her brush and in a straight up and down motion, she's just depositing gel wherever she sees a, um, a divot on that nail. And she's using the line of light from her, the lamp that we have set on the table. And she's inspecting the, the, the nail and seeing how the light flickers and dances on that surface. If it's dancing a whole lot, that means there's a wave or a divot in the nail. And so then she's gonna go in and she's gonna add a little bit more gel just to make sure that it's self-leveling and collapsing on itself. Once she's happy with the line of, of light, um, then she's gonna have me cure. We're gonna do one nail at a time because we're talking through this, but even as a nail tech, depending on your speed, don't be afraid to apply this technique to one nail at a time or maybe perhaps maybe two nails at a time at the very most. A lot of times what people do and one of the issues that they find when they're brand new and you're thinking you have to apply gel to all five fingers, the problem with that is if you can imagine, you saw how much gel she applied on her second coat to create that structure. You wanna create a nice apex. You want thin at the cuticle, create the apex and then thin at the tip. Well, if you go in and you're applying that on every single nail, the first nail is straight, the second nail shifts, the third nail shifts, the fourth nail shifts. So by the time you're applying that to the thumb, you're like this. What do you think is gonna happen to these four fingers? That gel is gonna start shifting and moving. And now when you go into cure, you're gonna have a lopsided nail. So be comfortable and confident in knowing that even if you're flash curing for about five, to 10 to 15 seconds, that's fine. But you wanna keep that gel exactly where you have it so that you, it doesn't give it enough time to shift and move around before you cure it. Okay, so now that we're polishing, I want you to pay attention. It's the same technique. Karen is going to the tip of the nail first. She's doing her capping at the very beginning so that we don't have to worry about capping um, at the end and leaving that dip that I was telling you about. But if you notice how she's fanning her brush and then flipping her brush over to making sure that she has a nice crisp, clean and straight sidewall. Um, but one thing I want you to pay attention to is when she's fanning her brush, she's not going against the pinch, the natural pinch of that brush that is attached to that tube there. So a lot of times nail techs will they don't pay attention to how the brush is pinched and then they'll flip that pinch over and they polish this way. So what that does is it doesn't allow the brush to fan naturally in the, the state that it should be in. And when you do that, you're not able to cover enough of the nail plate to get an even application. So right now we're just on the first application Fine. of this color. She's doing a couple of nails at a time so that it doesn't give time for the gel to, to move around. Now, this is a new product that we're trying out. Um, and so, and some colors move more than others. So we're just doing a quick flash cure so that she doesn't um, have any issues with any moving of the gel. And the reason why sometimes the gels 
they some depending on the color that you use they might shift away from the sides a lot of times it depends on how much pigment is inside that color um, and so some colors don't do that some colors you can apply thin coats and do all five fingers some colors you might have to do one at a time some colors you might have to do two at a time so just keeping in mind that as you're applying the gel color just keep kind of looking back at those other fingers and seeing if that color is one of those colors that shifts until you get used to the brand that you're using. So we are on the final stage um, of the structured gel manicure that Karen gave me. So the first thing she's doing, if you notice, is she's pushing my skin away from my free edge to make sure that there wasn't any gel that got cured on there. And the final step um, when we do a structured manicure like this is we use the soft side of the file. Now she's using the dull file that she used on me earlier. The file now is dull. And very lightly she's going underneath the nail and filing any little pieces of, of gel that might be stuck under there. Um, and then what this does also is if she sees a, an area where she wants to file a little bit more um, to bring back some of that shape, then she can do that here also. But what we want to point out is she's completely underneath the nail. You do not want to file where the color is. Um, you're not reshaping the nail. You're simply just cleaning it up so that the client doesn't feel that gel stuck on her skin like this. And so this is the finished product. And so we're at this stage, we would apply um, the cuticle oil, um, some salons might do a scrub and a lotion, but that's the stage that you would do it is after you have everything cured.